tonight I wanted to talk about some of the things I'm doing to prepare for my financial year next year in 2020. I know that these financial videos aren't the most popular on my channel, but there are things that I'm pretty passionate about and something I want to share my journey. Um, so I wanted to share 10 things I'm doing now in December to prepare for the upcoming year. Um, these are things that they can take a little bit of time and it may not apply to you. Um, they're just kind of things that I've been thinking about and reviewing and maybe you want to too. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing is shocker, figure out what your financial goals are. What do you want to achieve? Um, I am here to say you can achieve multiple things at the same time. It's all about prioritization. So if you want to pay off debt, but you also want to cash flow a vacation, you can do both of those. You just have to choose with what you have left over after each paycheck or each month, how much of it gets to go to each goal. Um, so what I want you to do is figure out what your goals are. Maybe it's to pay off debt. Maybe it's to fully fund a Roth IRA. Maybe it's an emergency fund. Maybe it's cash flowing something. Um, whatever it's going to be something you need to decide and you can add more goals and you can switch them up but it's nice to know kind of the direction you're going towards for this next year so that is my first tip is to figure out your goals i also would suggest writing them down and putting them somewhere you're going to see it maybe like in your closet is kind of a you know not super noticeable spot if you want to keep them more private on a bathroom mirror you know on your dashboard in your car wherever you're going to see it and be reminded what your goals are i feel like once you are reminded kind of on a daily basis, it helps you stay on track. Number two is to review your insurance premiums. If you are the one that pays for insurance, um, in the US anyway, we have premiums for our insurance plans and it's something that you wanna check. I did have to, um, I have to re-enroll my insurance every year. That's just something that my company makes us do. Um, so I re-enrolled and with that, I checked out what my premiums are. Mine did go up only by $5, thankfully, but still it's $5 a month that I need to be aware of. Um, with that, if you have the option to take out your insurance premiums pre-tax, that's something you may want to think about if you haven't been doing that. What happens is it comes out before you get taxed, so then your income tax and your for your federal and your state level is a little bit less. That's something I do to kind of optimize a little bit, um, and my employer offers it as an option. Additionally, with insurance, if you have um, an FSA, which is a flexible stint bending account, or an HSA, which is a, which is a health savings account, um, you wanna review both of those. So for an HSA, that's something that you can put money in, there's a certain dollar amount cap, and then it can roll over year to year, whereas a flexible spending account is just for the year. So if you have a flexible spending account, you'd wanna look at what you put away this year, was it enough, was it too much, was it not enough? Where did you fall in kind of forecasting what you want to do for the next year? And then for an HSA, you'll want to decide how much money you can put away um, legally, but also how much can you afford to put away towards your health deductibles and out-of-pocket expenses. So those are two things that you want to review in addition to your insurance premiums. Number three is similar as you want to review what you're putting away for retirement. So if you are offered a 401k or a 403b or any other kind of retirement um, that are retirement plans that are employer sponsored, you want to review what you're currently putting away. Um, can you put away more? Maybe that's a goal of yours to put away an extra 1% each year or something like that. Um, now is the time to review that and make those decisions so that starting in January, your checks are going to be reflective of that. Speaking of checks, I'm going to link a um, great website down below. It's for a paycheck calculator. What you do is you fill out what your annual salary is, um, how you get paid. You can also do it hourly if you're an hourly wage worker. Um, you can figure out how many paychecks you get a month or a year if you're bi-weekly or if you have two a month or if you just have one a month like me. Um, you can fill out how many um, federal and state deductions you're taking. You can play with that. You can play with your pre-tax and your post-tax um, deductions. And it'll let you know what your monthly or by paycheck take home check is going to be. So after all of your taxes, after your retirement, after your um, insurance, after all of that fun stuff is taken out, it lets you know what you have left over. So this is what I use to help figure out how much can I actually put away um, and also how much am I going to be working with if I you know, decide to put 10% of my paycheck away in my um, retirement account, what does that mean for my take home? Can I still sustain a 
um, you know, normal life, or is that going to be too much and maybe I need to wheel it back in a little bit to 8% or something like that. Um, so that's something, like I said, it will be linked down below. You can fill out all of your information and you can also play like if you were to get a raise or like things like that, you can play with it, which is nice. You can also play with the deductions, which is a perfect time to review the deductions for your state and federal taxes as well. Um, just checking my notes here. <laughs> um, the fifth thing that I want you to review are your bills. So some of our bills end up kind of creeping up over time. It could be your cable, it could be your internet. For me, my HOA, my association dues kind of creep up every year and I just got notice um, of what it will be for the next year. Um, other things that can creep up is like car insurance or your property taxes, things like that that are going to change what you're currently paying next year. It also could be things that maybe are going down. So for me, my car insurance went up a little bit, but I'm turning 25, so my car insurance is going to come back down um, as that's kind of what happened as you get older with car insurance in the U.S. anyway. But that's something to review and update what you're kind of expecting ballpark those numbers to be. Sometimes it's a straight on number and sometimes it's variable. Um, with that being said, kind of as you know all these things, you know what your pay home, take home paycheck is going to be and you kind of know what your updated bills are, I want you to make a template of your monthly bills. So you're going to make a list um, similar to this. You're going to make a list of all the bills that you have, all the expenses you have, what kind of the standard prices and also the due date. And then um, you can have this like per month that you just use each month as a template or this one is um, I have every month list at the top and I'll fill in as I go throughout the year what my bills are but that's something that you can figure out um, for me I have a water bill that is quarterly so it's nice for me to write out okay it's not gonna be January February but it is due in March and I can kind of track it out that way um, and just updating the numbers on the sheet here helps me know what I'm um, due for and it helps me make sure I'm not missing any bills every month that I need to pay so that's something is updating that master list um, with your estimated take home if you're going to be changing or have anything different coming out of your paycheck so that you know how much you have left over for everything else, for your spending, for your groceries, for your financial goals, all of that fun stuff. So once you kind of have your bills set up, I would recommend checking in on your sinking funds or like um, your little cash envelopes, however you do it. I don't really do cash envelopes. I do digital cash envelopes. I will have the app that I use um, listed down below if you want to check it out. Um, but some sinking funds you may want to think about are holidays or birthday related. Um, maybe it's for a certain um, trip that you have coming up. It could be for something like car insurance if you pay it every six months like up front you know and you get that discount um, one of the sinking funds I have is called my annual um, fund and for me this is kind of going into the next point is reviewing what are the things that come up maybe once or twice a year that aren't surprises like we know they're gonna happen but we kind of forget to plan for them for me that's my car registration so my um, stickers for my car um, my credit card fees so I have two credit cards that have fees on them and it comes up every year but I always forget about them um, AAA is something that I subscribe to annually Amazon Prime if you have any other apps so I have a workout app that I do on my phone um, but I do it annually because it's cheaper than doing the monthly payments maybe it's a home warranty um, your car insurance like we mentioned before just things that come up kind of periodically throughout the year like it's gonna happen every year just maybe not every single month what I like to do is I like to add all those things up and figure out kind of what I need monthly to get close to those goals so for me I put a hundred dollars a month into this fund that funds all sorts of things like this so that I am ready to pay those bills and it I may have to cash flow a little bit out of pocket from that monthly budget but at least it's not the whole thing, right? Like my car tags are $300 and just to be hit with that all of a sudden could totally derail some of my financial goals. So planning for it and having something stashed away, even if it's only $200 by that point, I'm $200 further and I have $200 already saved, ready to pay this bill with than I would have if I didn't plan at all. So that's something that I would recommend is looking at those annual expenses and making a sinking fund for that. Um, number nine is to evaluate your usage and what I mean by this is like with subscription services with your cable with kind of everything that you have really evaluate am I using 
this service? Am I using it to its fullest worth? So I know a lot of people sign up for gym memberships and then they just don't go. Okay, well, you're not using it, so you might as well cancel it and save that, you know, 10 to $100, however much your gym membership is a month. Um, maybe you're doing meal subscription plans like HelloFresh or something like that. Is it worth it to you? If it is, great. If it isn't, cancel it. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can look at in your budget on a fine tooth comb and really decide, am I using it? Um, and is it providing value to my life? And if the answer is no to both of those, I would suggest thinking about cutting it out. Um, there's just other things that you can be prioritizing, other goals that you can be reaching or other services that you could be subscribing to that are going to provide a little bit more value and use in your life. My last thing is to figure out what you want to track. So a lot of people are number junkies. Some people are visual. There are um, a ton of coloring sheets. I'm going to link the website down below. It's debt free charts that you can color to help track your progress on like student loans or your car loan or credit card, or they also have savings trackers that are super cute that you can fill in as you go. Um, I find a lot of people myself included get motivated by seeing, um, you know, charts and things fill up or like thermometers, you know, you read color in the lines. Um, other things for me, I am a numbers junkie. So I like tracking my net worth. I like tracking how much I saved for the month, how much I put towards debt, how much, um, how close I am to a goal, like percentage wise, I like to track my like emergency fund and percentage. So I'm, you know, 30% of the way there. I'm actually only like 3% of the way there, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, and just kind of figuring out what you want to track this year. Um, you can always add more things. That's the nice part is, but I definitely would recommend if your goal is to pay off debt this year, keeping track of how much you're paying, you'll be amazed how quickly your numbers are going to add up. So those are the 10 things I would recommend you guys think about for the end of the year to start your January 2020 budgets off with a fresh start, with a fresh pair of eyes, and that you're prepared for the upcoming year. If you guys have any other tips that you are doing to prepare for the upcoming year financially, I would love to hear them. I'm sure everybody else would leave them down below. Um, and that's kind of going to wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any other financial topics or questions that you want me to cover, feel free to leave those down below. Or if you just want to have a conversation, I love connecting with you guys. I know money can be a tap taboo subject, but I think it's kind of interesting. And I think cheering each other on to reach our goals is super important. So. That's all I have. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next one.